Hey everyone, this is Shakti from the Hyperswitch team. So in this video, I'm going to take you through the steps involved in deploying Hyperswitch in your AWS account. So I'm going to run the CDK script in my own AWS account and also show you how to use the platform. So this is what we are going to cover in this video. First, we will see the high level architecture of Hyperswitch and understand the various components that are involved. Next, we will see what all you need to run the CDK script and then we will run the actual script in your AWS account. After that, we will use the demo store and do a test transaction on Hyperswitch. Post that, we will see the logs and analytics for the transaction that we just made. Finally, we will explore the Hyperswitch control center and see what different features and settings are available. So let's get started. So this is how the Hyperswitch setup looks like. Currently, you might already have a website or an app, a backend server which does all the processing and various themes to support the functioning of your application on a day-to-day -day basis. In the same cloud environment, we will be deploying Hyperswitch. As you can see, there are three components as part of the Hyperswitch setup. First, we have the checkout SDK. So this acts as the front end and this will render the checkout page. You will basically have to integrate this in your website or app. Second is the app server. So this will have the core APIs for connecting with the processors and completing the transaction. Finally, we have the control center, which will help you configure multiple processors, view payment analytics and toggle additional features as per your requirement. As you can see, the Hyperswitch application is connected to a bunch of payment processors, gateways, and payment methods. By integrating Hyperswitch in your application, you will gain access to all of them. So let's see what are the steps we have to deploy Hyperswitch on AWS. First, you'd need Git installed on your local machine. You'd also need to use Node version 18 or above. And finally, you'll need an AWS user account with admin access. So when you create a new user account, Usually, you only have a root user account. But to run the CDK script, you'll need to have a non-root user account. So if you don't have one already, you can follow the steps given here to create a new user with admin access. Once you have done that, we would need to set the following environment variables in your terminal. So as you can see, you can choose the region in which you want to deploy the entire setup. And then you'll need the access keys to the user you have created in the previous step. If you don't have the access keys already, you can create the access keys as shown here. Once that is done, you can provide the access keys in your terminal and you can export these commands and run them and set the environment variables. If you have MFA setup, you would need to set the session token as well. Now let's run the Hyperswitch uh, CDK script. So now I'm copy pasting the script. So as you can see, we are cloning the CDK repo. So once that is done, the script will verify if the account you are using is the right one. So as you can see, you can confirm if the account and the user is the correct one you want to proceed with. Proceeding with yes. For this demo, we are going to choose the production ready setup. So now you can confirm if the region you want to run is the one that is shown here. So I will proceed with the same region. So this is this is required uh, to set up the RDS instance. So this is the main uh, Hyperswitch DB. So you would have to provide a password for your RDS instance. So I'm going to give a password of my own. Re-entering the password, confirming it. So now this is the admin API key. So all our Hyperswitch APIs have an admin API key and this has to be set while you're deploying the setup. So I'm going to do the same as well, confirming the API key. So here you can choose if you want to push logs to S3 and open search. For this demo, I am proceeding with no, but if you want to set it up, you can proceed with yes as well. So next, we have to create the AES master encryption key that will, that will serve as the data encryption key for Hyperswitch. So you can follow the commands shown in the script to generate this. So I'm opening a new window and I'm running the commands. So once that is done, you can, uh, you can enter the IP addresses you want to whitelist in EKS. So you can just proceed with the default mode for now. So next, you have an option to use the card vault uh, in this setup. So basically, if you if you want to use Hyperswitch in your production environment, you might want to use the card vault so that you can store sensitive card information or any other payment method information. 
So I'm going to proceed with yes here. So now you would have to create in a master key for the card vault as well. So let's do that. We can again use the same commands provided in the script. So running this command again in a window. So this will take about a minute or two. Uh, so once that is done, you can enter the encrypted master key. So we have the key here. I'm just copy pasting it and putting it in the main terminal. So now the card vault has its own RDS instance. Since uh, it's sensitive data, see the DB has to be separated. So again, we'd have to set up the password for the card vault's RDS instance. So let's do that. Let's provide a password. Confirming the password. So for the key manager setup, uh, this is something that we use to uh, handle the encryption in an isolated environment. For this demo, we can proceed with no. So the script is proceeding further. So as you can see, the script will first validate a few permissions and it will also check if the AWS account is set up to proceed further and then it will start installing our components. So the script will take around 20 minutes for the deployment to be completed and then we can see the output. So the deployment is completed. So as you can see, we have five uh, main outputs. So first is the hyperloader JS. So this is basically our uh, checkout SDK, which is deployed on uh, S3. Uh, next, we have the app server. And this will be the base URL for all our hyperswitch APIs. And then we have the log server, where you can uh, check the logs in the audit trail. The control center is the dashboard, where you can log in and check out different things. And finally, we have the uh, HyperSwitch demo store. So this is a demo app that we have included along with our SDK. And you can use this to make a test transaction and explore the platform. So let's start with that. I'm copying the HyperSwitch demo store URL and opening it. So this is how our checkout looks like. So as you can see, this is a demo merchant app. And we have our checkout integrated. Uh, you can see different payment options. So let's do a test card transaction. So I am going to enter the card details here. We also see the order and other relevant details here. So clicking on pay. So as you can see, we have successfully tested a transaction. So now let's look at the transaction in our control center. So I'm copying the URL and I'm logging in. Let's load the control center URL. So the username and password is provided in the script. So for this demo, we have a test account that we have created. So entering the details. So we are logged in. Uh, so just provide a business name here. For this purpose, I'm just going to give demo business. But you can give your own business name for your reference. Let's start. So we're not logged in. And you can see the account has been created. So let's go to the analytics section. Uh, here we will see the analytics for the payment that we've just made. As you can see, we have two payments uh, which is made, and uh, there's one successful payment. And I'm going to check the operations tab as well. So here you can see the test transaction that we just completed. Uh, here you can see the actual amount that we made for the test transaction. And we can also see the other relevant parameters associated with this transaction. It also indicates which connector the transaction flew through. So for this demo, we had actually connected a, a Stripe test account. This is a mock processor that we have along with the demo setup. So it was pre-configured, and hence we were able to do a transaction using that. So this is the payment processes tab. So as you can see here, we have the uh, mock connector that we had just used. So this, is, this was configured by default during the deployment. We also have four uh, mock connectors that you can just use and use different payment methods to test the transactions. And below, you have the actual list of processors that we have uh, in, our, uh, in our suite. And you can configure your own sandbox credentials if you have and try out any of these processes. So now let's check out the logs for the payment that we just made. 
So I'm going to open the uh, Grafana URL, copy pasting it from the terminal, opening it. So here I'm going to go to the explore tab and I'm selecting app here and then hyper switch server. And now I'll copy paste the payment ID from the control center and paste it here. I'll add JSON parser and I'm going to run this query. So now you can see the logs for the transaction that we just made. So this will give you the real time API calls that were made for this transaction. So now let's look at the routing section. So when you have more than one connector configured, you might want to set up some routing rules to understand or to predetermine how the transaction will flow through each of them. So as you can see, we have three configurations possible for setting the routing rules. Uh, it could be either volume based, it could be rule based, or you could have a static priority order. So when you say volume based, you can configure rules to say, hey, X percent of transaction should go through connector one. And for rule based, you can configure rules to say when the amount is greater than say X, it has to go through connector one and so on. Or finally, you can also have a static priority order. And how this would work is uh, the transaction will always flow through the first priority connector. And if that is not available or there is a downtime, it will go through the next one and so on. So now let's also look at how the 3DS rules can be configured. So going to the 3DS decision manager here. So we can create a new, new rule. So this will decide when 3DS has to be enforced and when there will be a step up and customer will be authenticated. So as you can see, this can be based on multiple parameters. It can be based on amount, it can be based on currency, or it can be based on any other parameter that you want to configure. So we can just create a rule like this and we can decide when 3DS will be enforced for transactions. So that's it. We've deployed HyperSwitch on AWS successfully. So next steps. You can go through the documentation. You can understand how to use the HyperSwitch Control Center, uh, how to test the payment, how to run the API collection using Postman, etc. Uh, you can also refer to the going live section and understand if you have everything in place for a smooth production launch. That's it. Thanks, everyone.